Hello and welcome to yet another video, and since we are approaching the end of the year, at least according to the time of recording, you could be watching this in summer, or in spring, or in fall of next year, or whichever year, 2025, I don't know. Anyway, I thought it might be good to do a video on budget photography, specifically on cheap cameras, because nowadays you can find a lot of good digital cameras secondhand on the used market, and if you don't need a lot, but you still need good quality images out of it, I think there are a lot in the market right now. And today I'll be talking about this camera. It's the XE1, the original one. It's been out for a while and yeah, you can find it really, really cheaply nowadays. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the X-E1, I will not be talking too much about the detailed specs on this camera, it's been out for like so many years, there's so many videos about it, but here in the end of 2020, going on to 2021, I thought it might be good to still recommend this camera because I found this on a used market for 90 euros, well 98 euros plus shipping, and uh, this can be a backup for some Fuji users or a nice stepping stone into Fuji line of cameras if you're on a super super tight budget, or it can be just a nice camera for some like just to take out and just feel retro because there's something about using older cameras. Of course, this is not a camera from the previous century and it's not a camera from like 2005 or 2002, but Fuji as a camera brand based their uh, picture profile on their original film, like the film rolls, how they look and everything and they also update every single model or every single major model that they release they always update their uh, look even on the same film and with the older sensors it also produces different look of images not only different colors but also different type of color depth and everything and there's something about like something retro or nostalgic about those colors that you get from the older digital cameras for, as well that you don't really get from the newer sensor cameras. So if you're into that, this might also be for you. But otherwise, if you're just really into editing images, but also don't want to spend a lot, this camera is also for you in my opinion. Anyway, I will be first talking about the ergonomic side of this camera and then pros and cons mainly stills, minor touches on videos, and then just what I think about this camera to conclude it all. So the ergonomics of this camera, I think it's a really, really light camera and really well-built camera. I mean, of course it is mostly plastic. The mount is metal though, thank you. <laughs> but it's, a, it's, it's still a really well-built camera. It's very minimalistic. It has a smaller mic port, which means if you're using it for video, you will be needing an adapter, but honestly, I don't really recommend this camera for video at all. Anyway, I'll be talking about that later. Um, the button layout are really, really simple. There's a simple shutter speed up here, the exposure compensation, um, just on and off. I really like the fact that they use the newer uh, shutter release button because you can add the accessories some people or actually a lot of people will just put like a button colored button on here uh, I like to use it for the shutter release cable so you just screw it on and then you have one of those manual shutter release cable just like back in the days pretty much so I like it that they still keep it because my X-T1 doesn't have it and it's just like a flat normal ordinary shutter button but this is a really nice touch though that being said uh, I do find that this power button is easy to switch on and off and if it's easy to switch on and off That means sometimes I come back home with a lot of images that I accidentally just take if this camera is just in my bag and if I'm riding a bike and if this um, button just slips like this somehow in the bag which happened actually and it will just keep on clicking 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 and I have the menu set on shoot without focus so like the image does not need to be in focus to be able to take pictures so there's that or sometimes if i'm just hanging on the side of the like my waist and my elbow or my arm accidentally switch it on my elbow or my arm also just press against the shutter button and then it will just keep on taking pictures while i'm walking so sometimes i 
get home with this camera and realize that I've been photographing pretty much my journey home. So that would be, well, that was actually kind of weird. And it's not only this camera, it's also my X-T20 and also happened to the X-T10. Not too much on my X-T2 and X-T3. X-T1 is a little bit stiff, so I never really had a problem, but my X-T2 and X-T3, when the button is a bit raised up, then the X-T1 and not as hard to um, turn as the X-T1, sometimes it happens, but it's still much harder than the X-T20, X-T10 and this camera. So I wish they would have put the same amount of pressure from those buttons onto their lower end cameras as well. Yeah, otherwise it's a very unique, well, not unique, but like really nice, smooth, minimalistic design. Um, there's a pop-up flash, like really nicely hidden in there. Um, all the buttons are the buttons that you need really to mainly operate with this camera. The LCD, I think it's at 2.7 inch, either 2.7 or 2.5, but it's way less than a megapixel, way less. So a lot of times when I'm looking to like even my phone or modern camera screens and I'm used to those screens where it's so sharp, I look at the screen, it's like, am I out of focus? Like literally, I'm not even being posh or anything, just literally it looks out of focus until I have to zoom in. And this happens so many times. Whether I'm shooting close-ups or just landscape or cityscape, I have to zoom in and make sure that, yes, it was actually in focus. It's, it's really, really low resolution, but if you only needed to see your composition, see roughly what color you're getting, the screen is nice. And on the monitor, the, the color is so much nicer because nowadays on the computer we have better monitors now, but um, with this monitor, you can kind of like get a sense or like an approximate of how the picture tonality will look like. Whereas you'll get it more accurate on the computer, of course, but yeah, it's there for the function of checking whether or not you got the shot, roughly how your images looks like, things like that. Otherwise, it, it it's not going to surprise you by any means. It's not going to win any award. The handling of this camera is great. Some people will just put a grip on it, but to me, it's a really small camera and I like keeping it small. Of course, on my X-T2, I have the L bracket on because it's convenient for the tripod and it just adds extra grip and the grip on the X-T2 is not comfortable at all. But even though this is a much smaller grip, but because it's a much lighter body and it's a nicer design in my opinion than the X-T2, it's just nicer to hold than my X-T2, but that's a very personal thing. And uh, yeah, and I think that's, oh yeah, and one last thing I'd like to mention is, or second last thing rather, is the SD compartment is underneath here. It bothers some people, like me, but to many it doesn't really bother. It's just that because of how close the tripod mount is to the actual battery compartment, uh, it's it just blocks it. You know how some tripod have such a small screw-on mount that sometimes you can kind of get away with it if the tripod mount is in the center of the camera, but it's not. And brings it, which brings me to the last point is that the tripod mount is not in the center of the camera. So it doesn't really matter that much to this camera, but it still annoys me of my OCD-ness. But of course, if you're doing a lot of panorama photography with this particular uh, mount anyway, then you might find this a little bit annoying, unless if you have an L bracket or some other panorama bracket specifically for panorama then you can really get away with it but if you're only using the tripod head with this mount to get your panorama then good luck but i know why they did that though because this is such a small camera if you mount something like the 16 millimeter 1.4 which is what i have on my xt3 right now filming me then the lens is definitely going to be protruding down um which it doesn't really line nicely with this lens it still touches barely touches the same um, height, length, I don't know, surface as this, but uh, with the bigger lenses it will definitely protrude downwards and if you have it on the tripod it could be troublesome because some tripod plates are long, so it's always nice to have it here. And of course when this camera was first released it was a really premium beginner camera and not like a low-end beginner camera. It was introduced at around like almost 1000 euros, almost I think. It's a long time ago. 
Again, I got this for like under 100 euros plus shipping. I won it for like around 90 euros for bidding and then just 8 euros-ish on top for shipping. But yeah, now into the pros and cons. I would like to start with a con first on the uh, both the image quality and the video side of things. And yeah, so the con would be, well, it's an older camera, which means that the uh, image quality is not there, the information is not there, the color depth is definitely not there. The skin tone could be a lot better, but then again, you're also getting a lot of this retro kind of look of the old digital camera, which some people really love. And uh, if you're only shooting JPEG, I think that this camera is still good enough like the details are still there and everything but if you're the type of person like that plays around with the raw files a lot i don't know if you hear that that's actually an alarm i live in the netherlands and the first monday of every month there is the alarm in case the dike breaks you know the dike is pretty much the only thing that keeps this country from being flooded anyway so if you do hear the alarm which is Anyway, <laughs> you probably hear my washing machine as well. Um, if you hear this alarm, then please excuse that. It's just going to be around for the next minute or so. Because they're really just testing. Whew. Anyway, uh, back to the image quality. Uh, yeah, the downside on the RAW files is that it's not going to be comparable to the more modern camera of the RAW files. Or even to like a camera that comes out a year or two after that. If you compare to like Canon and Nikon, Sony, what have you. Because the RAW files are limited and even when you're shooting cityscape at night sometimes um, it doesn't really recover certain areas even if you deliberately overexpose just for that dark area the details are still a little bit missing but if you're recovering a lot from the highlights which is now the positive side then you're definitely able to recover a lot of highlights with this camera which is you know take it uh, what you will because if you're more of a person who likes to recover a lot of shadows it may not be for you but if you're a person who likes to recover a lot of highlights then yeah this camera will not really let you down that much even for nowadays unless if you're doing extreme hdr then of course this camera is not for you but yeah i think that the skin tone is okay if you're shooting jpeg but if you're going for raw it can be a little bit rough unless if you spend a little bit more time in post processing yeah in video this camera, the autofocusing system is not there at all. Like, don't trust, don't rely on it. Put it on manual focus and you'll be much more happy. Of course, some people might not be using autofocusing system, then I guess that's okay. But which leads me to the next point is that the video coming out of this camera is not sharp. It is okay if you just post it on Instagram stories, social media, things like that, but or even document some certain like family moments but if you want to do something like close to professional or professional with it for nowadays standard at least it's a little bit soft and there are a lot a lot a lot of aliasing and more with this sensor at least for today's standards or even the standards of three or four years ago the more and aliasing is still too apparent on this sensor and to a trained eye it can be very very distracting and uh but to the positive it does shoot um video at least and the image quality is if you're shooting jpeg it's nice if you're shooting raw you can put in the extra time and then it will deliver the good so yeah just just give or take and also another positive but not image quality wise another positive is is that it's affordable so you can have it as your backup camera to your other fuji system or a walk around camera you know in the city and this is a, a point that i really really want to make is that when you get these kind of cameras that you know are limited it's not that it will limit your creativity personally i find that these cameras when it's more limited it just makes you focus more on the actual image i'm not trying to be cliche by saying it's not about the camera it's really about the photographer which at the, the end of the day it is but i'm not trying to be that cliche but think about like if you have a lot of features on the cameras which i do face this 
dilemma quite a lot is that I tend to think of like, oh, I can shoot this kind of image. Oh, that I can shoot that, that kind of image. Oh, I wish that, you know, there's something here so I can use this feature or, or whatever. I When I take the image from those cameras, with those cameras, I tend to think more of the technical side. Whereas if I'm taking with a more, taking the images with the more stripped down cameras, I tend to like think more about the conceptual of the images. The conceptual part, the thought, the story, what have you, the color composition, the composition itself, things like that. So, yeah, it's it's really a difference when I look at the pictures that I take with something like my X-T3 versus something that I take with this camera. Of course, I haven't had this camera for as long as my X-T3 nor my X-T2 because I recently just got it like a month ago, a month ago, and I only been able to shoot very little scenarios with it. Would I be comfortable shooting some paid, uh, paid clients with this camera? If it's not sports, then yes, which leads me to another side of negative, which is the autofocusing system. It's not a lot. There's not a lot of mode to, to choose with, and uh, the most reliable one is just a single focus point, and even that, the speed is not reliable, and it might be focusing on the background still. I have a like upgraded the firmware to the latest one with this camera as well as the lenses all the fuji lenses i have i also upgraded the firmware to the latest firmware and it still doesn't really seem to help that much but will it get the job done yes it will and i wouldn't be afraid to use this camera on my professional uh, shoot if i'm shooting portraits or anything that's stationary products things like that because i still uh like the raw files even though it has a lot of limitations and but i do think that if you're like a typical shooter who just wants a budget camera or a backup camera then the files are definitely definitely good enough <sighs> yeah i think those are the main points that i wanted to say with this camera I do recommend it and yeah, Fuji lenses might be a little bit expensive to get into, but they're sharp. If you're going for something like this standard kit lens, the 16 to 30, uh, the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens, it is still a good, nice and sharp kit lens. I've made a video about this comparing to the 18 to 55 and I still love this lens. It is plasticky, it is not durable at all, but it's a great starting point as well to have and it's also affordable at around 90 euros as well when I got it. Depending on where you live you can get it cheaper, more expensive, so take that with a grain of salt. And uh, yeah, that's it for this camera and my conclusion is it's still a nice camera to have with you if you want to have it like as your first beginner camera or first camera to learn or a backup camera or camera to just take out with like to do simple photography because it still gives you that APS-C size sensor which gives you a nice shallow depth of field, good enough in low light, um, quick or decent enough uh, AF still for today's work if you're not shooting a lot of sports and still a nice skin tone and uh, overall skin tone and also nice color reproduction overall. So yeah, I would still recommend this camera. It's, and if you lose it, it's not that much to pay for it, for a replacement for it anyway. So there's that. Otherwise, if you need a free photography guidebook, I have a free photography guidebook down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and for listening to me throughout this long talk and uh, stay safe. Have fun shooting, bye.